for tapes, CDs, DVDs to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the 2014 Memorial Day Deliverance Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Friday evening, May the 23rd, 2014, Nikki Pinson is the speaker of this service, teaching on Deliverance from Hidden Sins. I just want to say just one thing before Brother Nikki comes. Um, something that the Lord has been uh, working on me is that um, I have a lot of bad, bad stuff going on. <laughs> We've been faced here in Arkansas with some real issues here this last few weeks. And the Lord just reminded me, and it's been, it's been said here, so it's nothing new, but it's, it's so true, you know, it's Jesus. We have to stay close to Jesus. And no matter what is going on in the world, it doesn't change the truth of God's Word. And there's always going to be a people yes. in this in, in, the, in the community of sin, in the, in the arena of, of decadence, in, in, the, in the pits of hell, where we all were at one time before we came to Jesus. And as long as Christians, as long as people will, will be brave enough to continue to speak the truth of God's Word in love, there's always going to be somebody in that pit. I don't care how prideful they are of their sin. I don't care how, how they are living. If there's a cry in their heart, if God is drawing them, they've got to know there's some place that is there to help. There is the, the love of God that, that is willing to love the sinner. Not the sin, but to love the sinner. And we have to continue no matter what happens, whether we get thrown in jail, whether we, things are going to come, folks. They're going to come. And, and there's going to be a place, there's going to be a place where you're going to be, and we're, all of us are going to have to make some decisions whether or not we're going to compromise or not. But remember, there's always going to be somebody out there just like you and just like me that the Holy Spirit was drawing to the Father. And I want to be the one that is willing, as the person in my life showed me the love of God in the depths of my sin, in the depths of my corruption, is willing to love. I want to be that person that's willing to love them so that they can come to know our wonderful, wonderful Jesus. Yes, yes. Amen. Brother Nikki, please come. Brother Pastor. Brother Pastor. <laughs> A man with a teacher. <laughs> There's a Bible in this. Praise God. I want to uh, talk to you tonight about deliverance from hidden sins. Father, we ask that you give free course to your work tonight. Not playing games. Not here to take advice to your father. But God, you know what's in this place tonight. You know what's in the hearts, Father. And we ask you to view every corner of our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Deliver us from hidden sins and I'm talking about hidden sins that we know about. That we, we're aware of. God is, whether we know it or not. And we are. John chapter 8 verse 31 Then Jesus said, you know this here, this verse. And Jesus said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. No, he's not talking to the world out there. Which believe on him. The Bible is not written to the world. The Bible is written to the church. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. That's the condition. No matter what we claim, education, anything else, it's if we continue his word. And continue his word is more than reading your verse or two every morning. That means obey and live in, in, that, in the word. Knowing it. I, I'm amazed. Um, 
all through the years. I passed to the same church be 36 years in July. And I can tell you that 90% of the congregation doesn't, they don't read their Bible. And um, right now my daughter and her husband and their little girl are living with me in my house. And uh, once in a while, <laughs> I don't say too much, once in a while, it's sure not something that they're addicted to. Praise God. And you shall, and, and it's not just them, I'm not, I'm not putting them down, I'm saying it's, it's, it's the church. Uh, if we took a poll tonight, we ask people to tell the truth, we might be shocked. And if we think we're going somewhere with God, if we're going to accomplish something for God, and we have no time for His Word, there is no excuse for not reading the Word. I'm going to tell you something else. You'll never make heaven if you don't read the Word. If you're not an avid reader of the Word, if you don't study, you're not going to heaven. I don't care what you think. You can sing all the praise songs you want to. Praise God. And that's that's to help you. It's not to put anybody down. Verse 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. When I was about the, I believe, the third or fourth grade, I grew up in Dallas and in school, um, I never was a good speller. And thank God for spell check. And the uh, only thing is, it, it, you know, it doesn't, uh, it, you could use the wrong word and it wouldn't know that. It would be to be okay with it. But uh, sometimes. And I had a little cheat sheet that I put under my sleeve. And uh, that helped me with the spell test. Till this awfully caught me. And, uh, you know, I only remember two, the names of two or three teachers my whole career in school. Maybe four count college. But, uh, Miss Olga, my favorite teacher. And she called me. She just took it away from me. She didn't make a big deal of it. You know, I hurt more, standing right here, I did hurt more than, I, it still hurts today. It's a long time ago. I lost her trust. She was my favorite teacher. She's an older lady. I'm sure she's passed away a long time ago. You know what? I never cheated again. I can stand here and tell you I never cheated again. Praise God. Uh, we're talking about hidden sins. I had something hidden, and it was brought to life, and it, it cured me. Now you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth about hidden sins. The truth sets sinners free. Amen? It, the scripture says so. If they'll confess the truth about their hidden sin. If they'll confess it. Stop the excuses. Stop blaming someone else. Be, tell the truth about your sin. You're doing it because you want to do it. We must confess that it's not okay to perform that hidden sin. It's not okay. You may be struggling with something. I struggle with things. There's no one in here that has to struggle with things. There's not a person in here that hasn't had hidden sins. But the thing is, don't ever begin to excuse it or some dumb statement like God made it this way. Or I can't help it. Or God understands. You know, it's an old song. God understands to say well done. No, He understands and He won't say well done. Uh, tell the truth about it. Always tell the truth. Till God gives you victory, continue to say, this is wrong. And what I'm doing is wrong. And continue to confess it and repent over it till victory comes. Praise God. That's the only way you'll ever have victory. First John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, that includes hidden sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You, you, you may have to get forgiveness many times before you get victory over it. And Wilkerson said the most important thing you'll ever do is what you do after you fail God. Do you get up and try again? Or you just give up and wallow in it or say, well, you know, listen, the devil's going to be right there and tell you, you can never overcome this sin. Now, he's got a lot to tell you. He'll be your spiritual guide if you let him be. Rebuke that voice in the name of Jesus. Now we must tell the truth about that hidden activity, that it's a sin in God's sight. We must confess the truth about the consequences of our hidden sin. 
We're going to hell if we don't repent. Tell the truth. We must confess the truth about the cost of hidden sin. The physical, the emotional, the spiritual cost of our hidden sin. It's costing you. Sin costs. There was a black lady of Angels died many years ago and she preached a sermon and you may have heard it preached by someone else a different way. But she preached, sin will take your father than you intended to go. It'll cost you more than you intended to pay and it'll keep you longer than you intended to stay. And that is the truth. We must confess the truth that we cannot go forward with God, be blessed with God or be used of God until that hidden sin is dealt with. You can sing in the choir, you can preach behind the pulpit, but you're getting nowhere with God. We must confess, I'm, I'm going to say this here, there may be people saved from, from your preaching, mildly blessed from your singing. Because the truth, God's word is God's word. But I'll tell you this, you or me or whoever it is is not going to make heaven. We may influence some people to make heaven, but we're not going. We must confess the truth that our hidden sin is causing a separation between us and God. Isaiah 59 2, but your iniquities, have, your sins, hidden sins, whatever, has separated between you and your God. That's all, folks. And there's some people that haven't felt the touch of God in so long that they forgot what it is, and they're just going through the motion. The form that we, we heard this one, the form of God is this, but it's not there. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. I just don't know why God's not answering my prayers. Well, there's a reason. Amen. There, it's never on God's part. I, I mentioned this before Brother Clinton, B.H. Clinton, and said if the river's not flowing, there's a hindrance. Just, just bust that hindrance up and it'll flow again. Praise God. We must confess the truth that because of our hidden sin, God will not hear us. Psalm 66, 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Now, I, I believe if I understand right, a hidden sin is regarding iniquity in our heart. I, I won't go, I'm asking God about him. I mean, dig in our hearts. Amen? Deal with our hearts. We must confess the truth. <laughs> I don't care who we are. What have you got hidden somewhere? What are you looking at when no one else is watching? What are you doing? You know, there's a man in our church. He, he's, he was in and out several times. He's really been in and out, but way back there. A friend gave him a box of stuff. And he went down by the pond. He's throwing stuff in the pond. This, this guy's a real cowboy life. And uh, he, was, uh, he was going through there, and there was a joint of marijuana. And he knew what he needed to do with that. But you know what he did? He hid it in the barn. And I'll tell you, if you're hiding something, I guarantee you, the day will come. Yeah. And you'll be going there. Yeah. It will. Well, praise God. Now, and he's got big joy. I mean, he has. He's living for God. Thank you, Jesus. We must confess the truth concerning the condemnation that comes with performing hidden sins. You may put a smile on, but in your heart, there's condemnation. Just get Maybe you've lived with it so long that you don't know the difference. We must, I know, and, uh, and I'm going to say something that you might agree with, might not understand, but here's the thing. You're a pastor. Maybe you're having struggles in your life. That doesn't mean that you can't preach until you get every struggle fixed. If that was true, we'd never have a sermon. No one can preach. I'm not condoning anything. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not condoning anything. When I was young, my sisters and I sang uh, a trio and uh, traveled around singing. And I, I was 16, I think so. And I knew some things I was doing. But I was always careful, you know, to pray that stuff for you before I got up there behind that bullpen because I didn't know I didn't want God striking me the light. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So you, you get yourself right before. Hallelujah. Thank God I, he, uh, the teaching, whatever I had, was enough that I, I knew that and understood that. I've heard pastors have an affair with someone in the church in their office before that it's time for them to go preach. Uh, this is, and come out of that office and, and stand before the people and cry and shed tears, you know, and 
Oh, isn't that something? Yeah, he just told what he'd been doing before he came up there. We had a, one pastor that he had a pair of the secretary. That seems to be a, well, I don't have a secretary, but I <laughs> But, uh, you know, an old man in our community asked me the other day, he, he's, I, I, he, my wife's in the nursing home and has been for a while, been in and out for 10 years. And, uh, I, I'm moving in the big house behind our church and I'm gonna let my, uh, daughter and her family live in that house. We can't sell it because my wife loses her benefits. So I'm gonna move in there and he said, have you got another one? That's, that's what he told me. And that old man, you know, I just shows you where his mind's at. I told him, no, I don't. Praise God. But, uh, that doesn't mean I might not be struggling with, with something else. Come on, sir, somebody in the car. Come on now, praise God. Well, we must confess the truth about the fear of our hidden sin being exposed to found out. You know, you know the, uh, the, the sinner, uh, the wicked, they flee when no one pursues them. No one pursues them. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment. And every secret thing, sin, uh, this, this is God's talking to you, all of us. And every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be bad or evil. Now, hidden prayer is good. Hidden prayer is good. He said he rewards all of them. Hidden uh, good deeds that are hidden, that's good. You don't let your right hand know what your left hand does, that's good. But hidden sin is not good. It's not good to destroy you. You know, God gave uh, Jezebel in Revelation time a uh, space to repent, and she wouldn't do it. And uh, don't think tonight that it's all right with God because He hasn't exposed you yet. It could be that He's giving you space to repent. That's a warning. All of us. Some will say that what they do in private or hidden is their own business. It's no one else's business. Is that that's that's a, that's an excuse to use? This may or not may or may not be true. But regardless, the things we do in private is God's business, just as the things we do in public are God's business. There are going to be people, there are people now that are suffering terrible things and no one knows why, but God knows. Some will say that what they do in private isn't hurting anyone. Well, you know that, that doesn't excuse us. The only reason some won't deliver so is there, it, it, all, the only reason they won't deliver is because their hidden sin has been exposed. Should have wanted it before it was exposed. Again, this may or may not be true that it's, it's not hurting anyone. But regardless, if what we do in private is displeasing to God, if, it, if it's contrary to His Word, if you even know His Word, well, I'm just going to be strong. You fool, read the Word. You are a fool if you're not reading the word. And there's a lot of other strong words that could be used. And if you if you don't like what I'm saying, you know the fool doesn't like to be corrected. You you and I, we better get in the word. We may not have it one of these days, so. If it's displeasing to God, then it's a hidden sin and it will bring judgment upon us. Our hidden sin may not come to light in this life. It might not, but it will come to light. 1 Timothy 5, 24, some men are, sins are open beforehand, going before the judgment, and some men they follow after. And some are so misinformed, or ignorant, you know, the scripture says some are willingly ignorant. You know who, who those people are? People read the word. Willingly ignorant that they, they think that what they do in private will forever remain private. That's wrong, wrong, wrong. Luke 12, 2, for there is nothing covered, this is Jesus speaking, nothing covered, you leave this word, nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Is God speaking to you tonight? If we will repent and turn from our hidden sin, God will cover. Now, here's what he said, nothing covered that shall not be revealed, but if we'll turn from that hidden sin, then God will cover. So hang on. 
Don't you know that the God who can discern our every inward thought can also see in the dark and see behind closed doors? Not hide anything from God. And He'll reward you openly, but it won't be a good reward. He rewards those in the prayer closet, He'll pray in secret, He rewards them openly. But those that sin in secret, He'll reward them openly too. It's going to be a reward. For every action, there's a reaction from God. Unless it's covered with the blood of Jesus. Now, not only can he see those things, but he will reveal and expose all secret things not repeated. Up. It will be exposed someday. Now, just because we forgot our past sins doesn't mean that God's forgot. First Corinthians 4 5, Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who will bring to light, both bring to light, the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels or the thoughts of the hearts. He will bring them to light. Numbers 32, 23. Be sure your sin will find you out. That's always scared me. That woo. You know. <laughs> That's good. Praise God. That's like my daddy's belt. No one is exempt from this principle of law of God. No one. No matter our position in this life, even those in ministry, that God had no problem with exposing the hidden sin of a man that was after his own heart. He had no problem. That was David. 2 Samuel 12, 12, for you, this is Nathan the prophet speaking to him. Did you know it's the uh, job description of a prophet to uncover hidden sin? Did you know that? It's not just to go around and say good fiery things to people and tell them how they're going to, their things going to get better. But it's to uncover it. See, it has to be. And evangelists are to come to a church that we almost don't have any of those anymore. They are to come to a church and uncover things. One time I, I heard Brother Clinton say, and you're going you're gonna to hear this name from me, but Brother Clinton, he's going to do the Lord a while back. But he was talking, he had a, a great church there in Beaumont, Texas. And uh, the school of Christ has come out of that. But it, evangelists came and they were worshiping and the evangelist comes and just a minute, stop everything. Let's get down and pray. Yeah. And then he said, look, there's, he said, here's what's wrong. There's a man in this church going into another man's wife. That's a problem. Brother Clinton said, oh, you better be right because you're not this and this thing. <laughs> <laughs> So he said, let's get down and pray again. So he got down and prayed. In a little while, Brother Clinton was down the altar praying, somebody tapped him on the shoulder. He was his Sunday school superintendent. He said, I won't be back. He said, I'm sure you won't. There's one right there. There's one. That's what a prophet is to do. It's a scary job, isn't it? We're going to have a little table here for everybody to sign up for that one. <laughs> the line will be short. Well, it's, it's uncomfortable. But that's that's the people that God can really depend on. Just go tell, you know, go to the king and say, you're the one. You're the man. Oh my God, praise God. You did it secretly. He's talking to David. But I, God, will do this thing before all Israel and before the Son. His sin down him out. <laughs> if the king can't hide his sin, a man after God's own heart can't hide his sin. You know that? God was doing that man a favor. You know that? Yeah. God was being good to him. If, if we will repent, I'm, I'm going to get ahead of myself here, but that's okay. But if we'll repent of that sin, God's mercy very likely will cover that sin and keep it hid. I'm, I'm just trying to it'll cover it. If we'll do that, not every time, but it's a, it's a great possibility that His mercy will cover that. It will repent. The reason God has to expose it is because He cares about our soul. If He'll expose big name TV evangelists, and the world loves that, you know, the devil's crowd loves that. And it's a shame, it's bad. Uh, Nathan said, hey, you, you give the enemies of the Lord a great occasion to, to reproach His name. And that happens. But you know, God wants that man, or whoever it is, saved. God wants him to make heaven. And if he has to expose him, that's what he'll do. It's his mercy. 
Not only was God going to expose them, it's an interesting thing sometimes after people are exposed, there's just such a relief. It was hard to hide that stuff. I mean, this is watching over your shoulder all the time, having all these things in place. You know what I'm talking about. All this little, to keep that thing hidden. Looking over your shoulder, wondering did you see it? Not only was God going to expose David's sin, he was going to allow David, I guess I'll stop saying, we've talked, some have talked about smoking today. It's always amazing to me that people, especially in the church, try to hide their smoking. And they don't realize that people that don't smoke can smell that shit. <laughs> they can. You know? I'm not condemning them, I'm just saying, you know, uh, praise God. You get victory over it. And it's alright for me to preach against smoking. It's all right for the doctor to tell you not to smoke. You gonna get mad at him and not go back? I had a lady one time come in my church and she was I oh she's angry. She's smoking. I, I preach against it. Not because I hate someone. You just don't have any love. That's what she told me. I just didn't have love, didn't know what love was. And she quit coming. I preached her funeral a few years ago. Not only was God going to expose David's sin, but he was going to allow David to reap what he had sown. Yes, sown even in secret. Galatians 6, 8, For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. That's a law just as much as the law of gravity. It's as sure as the law of gravity. Jump off the 20 story building, you're going down to your death. This is a law. You sow your flesh, death's coming. And it doesn't have to happen that way. If you get pushed off the building, that's one thing. But nobody's pushing you to do that. I mean, they're quick, and you may have been doing it for a long, very long time. It doesn't matter. God can deliver you. I mean, they're quick to expose other men's sins. Gossip, gossip, gossip. I might have told you there was a pastor in our section and uh, another pastor told him, you, you know what he did 30 years ago. <laughs> 30 years ago. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I felt like. At, and he did put something in my heart. I had to work out you know, when I see this, this minister. He lost his position. He was high up and things like that. Very articulate man. Had a bright future. The devil do that. But when I see this old pastor that told me that, I'm careful. I see something else he told me. You know, they didn't want to do it again. I have a problem with that. But God reminded me, David did not do it again. Praise God. So don't let the devil tell you that. Oh, they didn't want to do it again. I was working a little piggy wiggly store in Quitman, Texas when I was young. And there's a man coming there and he'd start whispering. You know, he served 30 years in prison and they start telling him what he's doing, what he'd done. Good people of God won't do that. I don't believe so. Now, men are quick to expose other men's sins, that is, unless a man have, who has sinned secretly is loved. He's loved. You get enough people loving him. Or only pay for the whole Proverbs 10, 12 says, Love covers all sins. If, if God pulled back the sheep off of some of our politicians, but they've got the power and they've got the money or whatever to cover. David Wilkerson said, The sins of the rich are the same as the sins of the poor. They just can't afford the perfume to cover it up. That's right. Still the same. There'll be all kinds of people in hell, unfortunately. Now, but God, out of His perfect love, exposes unrepentant sin. Now, how to break the cycle of hidden sins? It's not enough to talk about it. There's a God can break it. I'm telling you tonight, God can break it. He's broken things in my life. First thing is have godly sorrow, number one. Second Corinthians 17, for godly sorrow works repentance to salvation, not to be repented of or repeated. You don't keep going back and doing it again and again. But the sorrow of the world works death. I will say this. As long as you come back and confess your sin, God will forgive you. That's not the problem. The problem is you'll give up. And the devil will tell you you can't overcome it. And you'll get discouraged and you'll lose your faith. 
For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God. That's true. But what happens is repeated sin over and over, you lose your faith that saves you. It, it affects you. You can't you can't really you can't go to God in prayer boldly and expect an answer when you these things are in your life. You see, that's one thing that's costing you. Now, godly sorrow over hidden sin is required. Or the cycle, the habit, the addiction will never be broken if you don't have godly sorrow. Godly sorrow is not sorry because our hidden sin came to light. I've watched them. They get caught. They'll show up in church in my church. Got a big old Bible under their arm. And they're sitting there. You know, this breaks my heart. I'm fixing to tell you. This a young man came. He's had a terrible time with drugs and things. And he's lost everything. Lost his family. He can I mean, God saved that young man. And uh, this is beautiful. But then he started trying, he started trying to restore his family. He got his ex to come, you know. She'd sit there and cry. It looked so good. And then he would come. I text him, I call him. And uh, here's the thing sometimes when people are trying to come out of something, they're going too fast and they try to restore human relationships before they restore the relationship with God and it won't work. You've got to get that right with God if you never get that relationship back with that person, if you never get that job back or whatever. And I, I, it's, it's really been bothering me now. I, and I was driving by the courthouse this, this week and I saw him come out of our courthouse there. We have the neatest courthouse. It looks like a castle. My grandkids call it a castle. Very old. And uh, it has these round things on it. I don't know what I can call them. It looks like turrets, but Anyway, so he was coming out, and I saw him on the sidewalk. I was rolling my window down, and uh, I, I started to say something, and then I saw her. And then about the time I saw her, she was hit. And he was yelling something back at her. I said, yeah, that's it. And uh, I, you know what, though? I am not, in the name of Jesus, I'm not going to write him off. God is able. God's planted something in his heart. There's a, a young man that was in our church and he got saved through the Holy Spirit. He went to our Christian school. He was preaching and about to get his credentials. And I went on a trip to Mexico and they, he was supposed to be filling in for me. And they called me and said, I don't know what's wrong with him, but it's something wrong with his preaching. And I got back and he wasn't saying anything. He was hidden. And then he, he, he got to where he wouldn't preach. And then it came time for him to go and get his credentials. He didn't show up. But I found out what it was. There was a girl that her grandmother owned our church, her mother, and she was after this young man. And she came to church. He said, is it all right for us to invite date her? And I said, uh, I guess so, yes. She said, um, there's a two or three there I'm catching. And I said, yes, I believe it'd be okay. Well, she seduced him. And, uh, I gotta tell a little more. He, I told him he needed to move out of his grandmother's house. His grandmother raised him. And, and God had me tell him that you need to move out of your grandmother's house. But you know what? He, she was buying a $300 pair of shoes and a brand new truck and this and that. And he just wasn't willing to do it. Well, it was in his grandmother's house that all this was happening because she didn't care. She didn't care. If he'd have moved, when the Lord had me tell him to move, he was moved there in, in some facilities we had, I don't think it would have happened. But he was out of the ministry, out of the will of God. The only time he ever came back was 9-11. You don't know what I'm saying. I'll tell you a lot of people show up at church right after 9-11. But, when they saw that we were going to run into any more buildings, I guess, or whatever, or our free wasn't starting, they would. But then his, his wife had a stroke and she's young. I mean, almost died. And you know what? He really is back with God. And she is. He's really, I'm telling you, he's really back with God. And we've been talking on the phone, and uh, he reads my emails, and uh, I, it, it taught me something. I wrote him off. Kind of angry, if you want the truth. And I don't want to do that with anybody. As long as they've got breath in their body, let's believe God for them. I don't care who they believe God for them. They may have done you so wrong. 
This is what everybody in the community did. It hurt, hurt me so bad. And I told the Lord the other day, I wasn't even going down that road anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm in it. But God, He won't let me do that. Praise God. Matthew told me to take three blueberry bushes down there and get to it. <laughs> it. It helped. Praise God. I don't want really to know too much about it. This is really I'll just tell you what God tells me to tell you. Uh, God is sorrow. Praise God. It's not sorrow because a hidden sin came to light. It's sorrow because we lost our reputation, loss of friends, loss of our family, loss of job, lost our freedom. That's not that's not godly sorrow, grieving over that. I mean, I know we grieve, but we have to. I guess. Godly sorrow is sorrow over our loss of fellowship with God. The loss of His presence. You know why I don't do those things? Because I don't want to lose His presence. I can't live without His presence. Sometimes I go for a few mornings in prayer and, I ain't, and it's just like He's not there. I can't stay awake. I said, God, what is wrong? I don't know what's wrong. This has got to be fixed. You know, Moses said, and, and um, Moses said, God, if, if, if your presence doesn't go with us, don't, don't take us up from here. I've got to have your presence. Not because of what he does for us, folks. But because, I don't know, if you've never, if you've never experienced his presence, this is not something happening in your life, you, you don't know what I'm talking about. I hope you do know what I'm talking about. His presence, oh, praise God. Why go to that prayer closet if he's not going to be there? Well, I have to say this. Keep going, maybe he will. Praise <laughs> God. Pray that one. Praise God. The loss of his fellowship, of his presence, and the torment of knowing that we disappointed God. And we grieve the Holy Spirit whereby we are sealed unto the damnation. That's the sorrow. Godly sorrow is to have God's attitude toward all sin. We hate it, we despise it, we're disgusted with it. Not because of what it's costed us, but because it's destroying our fellowship with God. Adam and Eve lost their fellowship with God because of their hidden sin. Yes, they are to see it. Hey, look, how come the serpent didn't show up when the Lord was visiting? You know, it's very busy. He showed up when they weren't there, and they, well, you know, he won't know. But he will know. And when he said, Where are you? What have you done? He knew what they've done. The next one, number two, have godly faith. Galatians 5 5. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. This has to be by faith. You'll never overcome unless you have faith. Ephesians 2, 8. See, if we can believe God for healing, we ought to believe God for victory over a hidden sin. Or any sin. Attitude. Whatever. Have faith in God. It works. You're, you're not, you're not gonna, uh, you're not gonna get victory over by yourself. We have to have faith in God. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace, that's our God, not unmerited favor. Are you saved through faith? And that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. See, faith. Philippians 3, 9, And be found in him in Christ, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. It's God's faith we have to have. Everything comes from God. Everything comes from God. Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I. But Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. By the faith of the Son of God. I, I started preaching in our church many years ago. And I preached a series on this. And the more I preach it, the less the smart congregation got. I'm telling you the truth. When you start talking about people, talking to them about God living his life through them, they don't want that. They want God to come along beside them and bless them, yeah. make them smell good, look good, have good things, but they don't want a God that lives through them. They don't want to die to themselves. Their life is about their self. God help us. We must believe that God is able that He will make us holy and righteous by making us free from our hidden sin. That's by His power. 
I'm telling you, this works, folks. Have faith for God to give you victory. Oh, hallelujah. Praise my God. Praise God. Praise God. Have faith that He'll give you victory. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. He that comes to God must believe that He is, and He's rewarded them that diligently seek Him. I believe you, God. I believe you're going to give me victory over this. I'm going to quit listening to the devil that tells me I'm not going to get victory over it. The other day, I, you know, I'm beginning to realize something. And I heard, uh, maybe it was Sister McGee, I'm not possibly do this today. Oh, we heard powerful word today and last night. Thank God. And, and we could see the results in the service tonight. Is that right? I mean, we could see the results. The word of God. Well, Praise God. Having, having, having victory over this. God helping us. God, God blessing us and helping us to overcome by His power. No matter how long or how big or how deep our in sin is. If we we'll repent and turn away, if we we'll lay it aside, God is able. I tell you, He's able and He's willing. And He'll do it for you. Oh, praise God. Have no fear. The devil will try to tell you. Yeah. I was, what I was going to say is, get back to that. He, I began to realize that the devil's talking to me, and I thought it was me talking to you. And tell me all this negative stuff. You know, even when uh, we have struggled for all these years behind them on the electric bill, and, and the gas bill, and the whatever bill, and then you have to pay late payments, and all this stuff. Not because we want to be. Just struggle. And then God began to bless us. I mean, we're, now we can pay them on time. Praise God. If I remember to. But now we can pay them on time. You didn't have to be late, I guess. But, and, and you know what the devil told me? And it's not going to last. This is always, there he is talking to you. Nick, and you know what the, God gave me this? No devil, this is the will of God. You need to tell him some, this is the will of God. Get off my back. Quit talking to me. This is what God wants to do. This is what he's promised to me that he'll do. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Well, we must plead that God's able. Hallelujah. Now, three. Have godly willingness. We, we talk about have sorrow, godly sorrow, godly faith, and godly willingness. If you don't really want victory, you're not going to have victory. But here's another a scripture to stand on. Philippians 2.13 For it is God which works in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. It's an inward work. Not an outward work of self-righteousness. Read how there, the books over there, read how he says, I've read it, I don't know, maybe ten times. And uh, I recommend it. And so he, when he was had his experience with the Holy Spirit, he founded the Bible School of Wales, which Reinhard Bonnke went to. But the great God is awesome. Well, he was, the Holy Spirit was dealing with him to give himself completely to God. And he just couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. I mean, this went on for days. And finally, he, he said, he told the Lord, he came to him, I'll, I'll tell the Lord I'm willing to do it. And the devil said, you better not say that. That's the same as it happened. If you tell him you're willing. But it's God that works in us to will. And to do this good thing. If you don't have the will to overcome that, ask God for the will. I mean, he'll do anything. He'll provide everything you need to overcome, to be victorious, to be righteous. Why is it? We think we've got to do it. You know, okay, God, you, you saved me, but now I've got to do this. No, the same God it took to save us is the same God that's going to have to sanctify us, perfect us, do all that work in us. So have godly willingness. Be willing for God to make you willing to be free from sin. To lay it aside. To put it down. To never, ever do it again, even one time, as long as you shall ever live on this earth. As long as you've got this little hesitation. Well, you know. Uh, Brother Clint is another story he tells. Praise <laughs> God. There's a man, he's in the altar, and he, he, he's put his cigarettes there in the altar. You know, that's one, one where you kneel down. 
Well, his cigarettes are smoked and I had a rich spot. These cigarettes. Would you pray that God make me quit smoking these cigarettes? I won't quit. Brother Clinton didn't tell us, well, I'll tell you what, you, you repeat after me. Okay, sure. This will be good. He thought. And he began to pray and said, God, God, I will never. I will never. And he said, smoke another cigarette in my life. He couldn't say it. But then he said, what's wrong? Say it, say it, say it. He couldn't say it. Why? He wasn't willing. He wasn't ready. If God would take it out of your life with no pain. Well, he said he didn't see him for a few days. They were having a problem. didn't see him for a few days. Finally, he showed back up. His face was different. Everything. He says, hello? He said, it worked. I, I, I made that commitment and it worked. Praise God. There was a, a Sunday school teacher I had when I was growing up, and uh, his name was Brother Reese. I remember two things he said all the time. I said in his class, when we weren't poking each other and biting and all this, we were just a class of boys. And he, he told us one thing he told us that he was smoking, he wanted to quit smoking. I'm not picking up smoking, please smoke. The only reason I didn't smoke is because I couldn't stand smoke. And I thought anybody that does this is real dumb. And uh, my eyes water and all that. Thank God that I, this is, I think this is the biggest part. She's going to do it anyway. And uh, never, never drank a, a drop in my life. I'm sorry I can't stand up and tell you what a drunk I was and God delivered me what a testimony. No, I had a testimony. I never drank. But the reason I never drank is because I couldn't stand the smell of it. How could anybody? I can't stand Stand to smell a monster. You know what? I mean, you know what a monster drink is. That's like drinking Pepto Bismol or something to me. It, thank you, Jesus. I can't claim how holy I am. I'm too wimpy. Praise God. But there's some other things I've had problems with. I'm going to tell you guys. David Wilson said one time that he was picking up the phone to make a phone call. And, and the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, if you, if you don't put that phone down, it's over with. It's over with. He said, that's none of your business what I was going to do to say on that phone. you got your own problems. He said, I'm just telling you. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Well, we have to be willing. Oh, I was going to tell you, Brother Reeves, he, he wanted to quit smoking. He said, praying, God, have you quit smoking? God, have you quit smoking? One day, at work. This is almost similar. But he said, at work. And he's about to light up. Oh, I wish you'd help me take these cigarettes away from me. We want God to take it. It's like someone is saying, we want, we want to get in the prayer of somebody to deliver us from it, and we don't do anything. Well, there's a voice behind him who said, put it down now or you'll never quit. He turned around and looked, and there was nobody behind him. Got a little nervous. <laughs> he put it down there and smoked another one. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Well, be willing. Now, Achan's hidden sin. Uh, Joshua 7, 19. And Joshua said to Achan, My son, I pray you, give glory to the Lord, God of Israel. And make confession to him and tell me now what you have done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered, uh, Joshua said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord, God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. Now, he said, Against the Lord, God of Israel, even though men have lost, have lost their lives in the battle of Ai because of this he didn't see in the camp. You know the story. And, but David said the same thing in Psalm 51. He said, in the only God, I see it. And when I saw, number one, I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels. Wait, I don't know how you got it all back there with him, but I see it. Then I, number two, coveted them. And number three, took them. And behold, they are number four hid, hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. Wasn't hidden from God. So Joshua sent messengers, they ran to the tent. I mean, this is they ran to somebody to take care of. And behold, was hid his tent and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them to Joshua. And to all the children of Israel, this is full exposure of his hidden sin. All the whole, just like Nathan told them. David, I'm going to do this before all Israel and under the sun. And lay him out before the Lord like the letter that 
Rabshake of Assyria sent to Hezekiah, who went straight before the Lord. And then they laid him out before the Lord. Said, God, we, we've got to get this fixed. Here it is. Have you ever laid your hidden sin out before the Lord? And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wages of gold, and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his donkeys and his sheep and his tent and all that he had, and they brought them to the valley of Acre. And Joshua said, Why have you troubled us? He didn't sin troubles others. Why have you troubled us? The Lord shall trouble you this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned him with fire after they had stoned him with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones to this day, so the Lord turned the fierceness of his anger. Now a thought had come to Achan, and he entertained it. I know one time I was going on a trip. This, this idea came in my mind. And I, I, I learned a lesson. You, you, better, you better review those ideas. Because they ended up costing me. Now, to practice the hidden sins, number one, to be a hypocrite. Number two is to live a double life. And they can do this. Are you living a double life? Are you a hypocrite? See, other non-church people, not the only ones that say hypocrite. Jesus said you hypocrites. Joshua told Achan to give God the glory, for it will be God's way and not our way. God got the glory over Achan's hidden sin. Achan's hidden sin, and it was a lesson to the, to the nation. I don't think anybody else did it. No, they didn't. Achan's hidden sin caused the children of Israel to lose an important and costly battle, and therefore to lose credibility. He said our enemies will be involved against us. Achan's hidden sin didn't just cost him his life, but it cost others also, including his family. And those soldiers out on the battlefield, they had to turn and run. Israel turned and ran. Why didn't they could die in battle? But the other bat, the other soldiers that lost their lives at AI. Why? This is what the Lord gave me. Um, and didn't they even wonder why he didn't die? Maybe he got, well, you know, God, it's okay with God. I didn't die. No, because his hidden sin must be found out in order to free Israel from the curse of that hidden sin. There's a curse that goes with hidden sin. Freedom and deliverance comes when our hidden sin is dealt with and repented of. Whether or not it's ever exposed. There's something worse than having our hidden sins exposed. And that's an eternity in hell. Now the curse of hidden sins, hidden sins cuts off our source uh, from God. Of life, love, peace, joy, strength, boldness, confidence, righteousness, health, prosperity, and usefulness in the work in the kingdom of God. To hide sin is to be unrepentant. Meaning instead of repenting of that sin, we're hiding it so we can continue performing it. So hidden sin is unrepentant sin. Hidden sin is sin unrepented of. When we hide sinful practices, we grieve the Holy Spirit. And therefore the Holy Spirit cannot work to us until that sin is repented of and laid aside. You may try for a while, and you may fool some people for a while, but, but that, in, in time you'll dry up and there'll be nothing there. Or you'll be found out. It's a prophet's job, as I mentioned earlier, to uncover hidden sin. So that the, the curse is, see, like there was a curse on Brother Clinton in his church. And there's more to the story, but so the curses can be broken, so deliverance can come, and so that the Holy Spirit can flow again unhindered. It was a prophet, Nathan, that told David, You are the man. God forgives him. One time I was praying for a, a teenage girl in our church and her parents were standing there right beside her and he was on the church board and he was uh, president of this and president of that and and, they, and, um, and God gave me a word for her. And uh, I said, Lord, if I say that, I don't know what happened here. But I obeyed God and I said, you know, she broke and getting weak and cry. I'm going to tell you this, the Holy Spirit's always gentle. You don't know, drag your stuff out. You know, you understand what I'm saying? He's always a gentleman about it. He's never cracked. But, uh, and, and, he, and he was then. Now God forgives hidden sin that's repented of. The only chance we have of our secret sins not being exposed 
And that is, again, that's not the important thing. The important thing is that we get victory. But the only chance we have is if we truly repent. For the one, the very one that exposes secret sin has bound himself to forget all those sins we've been in. He's the only one. People may or may not forget, but that's between them and God. Isaiah 43, 25, I, even I, am he that blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and will not remember your sins. Micah 7, 19, he will turn again. He will have compassion on us. He will subdue our iniquities, our hidden sins. Praise God, he will subdue them. And you will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Isn't that where you want that hidden sin? 1 John 1, 7, But if we walk in the light as He's in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ His sin cleanses us from all sin. Even private hidden sins. Praise God. Unless we're walking in the light, our sins are not covered. Psalm 103, 10-13 He has not speaking of God. He has not dealt with us after our sins. Oh, praise God. Nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. I'll tell you where I'd be, right? I'd be in hell. Maybe in prison. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. For as far as the east is from the west, you know you can go east and you'll never go west. You know that. You don't you know, understand that. So far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Like as the Father pities his children, so the Lord pities him that fear him. Now I'm going to tell you. Those that fear Him repent. That's how we know if we fear Him, if we repent or not. We know if we love Him, if we keep His commandments. But we know if we're repentant, or we, we know if we fear Him, if we repent. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There's no temptation overtaking you, but such is common to man. But God who is faithful will not allow you to be tempted you know what you're able, but with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Praise God, without holding, yielding, and sinning. Now how many times has God provided a way of escape from our hidden sin, but we ignored it or we rejected it? How many times have you almost found out and you thank God you weren't and you say, I'm sorry, but back to it. How many times has God provided a way of escape from our hidden sin, but we didn't have the faith or the willingness to repent and walk away from that sin? Well, praise God. You know, Cain thought he had hid his sin. Lot thought he had hid his sin. You know, Abraham's only one really is worried about he can't. Abraham can't see what I'm doing over here. Joshua's brothers thought their sins were hidden. But not only they were uncovered, their daddy knew what they'd done. You know what they did. They sold them into slavery and took that coat home, put some blood on it, and said, Dad, you know, is this your son's? It was hidden for a long time, wasn't it? David thought his sin was hidden. And it came down hard on the man. You know, when Nathan gave the parable about the man that had all his sheep, took that other man's sheep. Boy, he came down, tell me who he is. He'll die. All the time he's hiding his own sin. Oh, yeah, we'd be hard on other people. While we're hiding our own sin. My God. Praise God. We bow your heads. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The Lord, don't let anyone escape from here tonight without, without dealing with this. You brought us here together, Father. But this is not the message I, I thought I'd be preaching now. But you said that this is the one. And you brought us here and there are people here, Father. And if they don't deal with it tonight, I don't know what happened. But you're warning some people, Father. You're warning people. My God, you're warning people. We serve a very compassionate God. You won't help. You won't help. You want deliverance. You want to put that thing.
This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.